In this video, we're going to be looking at latent heat and gas pressure. As you can see, this is video two of two for the particle model of matter topic. And for the next session, there are two options. You can either do the end of chapter test if you're following along with the workbooks and test papers, or if you're just watching the videos, it's atomic structure number one. Let's get right on with it. Energy transfer by heating. Heating is a way of transferring energy from one system to another. Remember, internal energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy of particles inside a system. So it's the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of the particles inside a system. It's not the sum of the kinetic energy of the system. It's the sum of the particles, kinetic energy and potential energy. If a change of state happens, so if something moves between solid liquids and gases, the energy needed for a substance to change state is called latent heat. When a change of state occurs, the energy supplied changes the energy stored. Internal energy, but not the temperature. This means if you're heating a substance up and the temperature suddenly stops rising, the energy is being transferred into the internal energy store rather than the thermal energy store. After a while of this, the substance will evaporate or melt because the particles have enough energy to spread out. So, latent heat. Latent is another word for sort of hidden or secret. That's kind of the, um, the context of that word. And it's latent heat, it's called latent heat because you're supplying this material or supplying this system with heat energy you would expect the temperature to go up, but it'll get to a point where the temperature will stop going up and instead you aren't actually giving the particles more heat, you're giving the particles more energy in their internal energy store, in the potential energy store. And what this means is the particles are getting more energetic and they are spreading themselves out and they're becoming the next state. So if you have a solid and you heat that solid up you will see the temperature of that solid rising, but then the temperature will stop rising because the energy which you're putting in isn't heating them up anymore. It's going towards turning that solid into a liquid. Basically, specific latent heat is where energy is put into change in the state rather than heating up. So rather than heating it up even more, rather than making the temperature go up, the energy which you're putting in is breaking up those bonds. It is going towards changing the state. So, a key definition. The specific latent heat of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of the substance with no change in temperature. So, that's a key definition and I would recommend learning that for the exam. E is equal to ML. Another equation. Energy for the change of state is equal to mass multiplied by the specific latent heat. So, energy for a change of state, well that's given in joules because it's an energy. Mass, that's given in kilograms. And specific latent heat, that's given in joules per kilogram. So the third equation which you need to know for this topic is E is equal to ML. Work example. A substance requires 300 joules of energy to change from a liquid to a gas. It has, a, it has a specific latent heat of 900 joules per kilogram. What is the mass of this substance? Well, firstly, we're going to write out our formula. E is equal to ml. 300 is equal to m multiplied by 900. So our unknown here is the m, it's the mass. So we're going to rearrange this formula. We're going to divide both sides by 900. So we'll get that our mass is a third kilograms, one third of a kilogram. Mass is measured in kilograms, so my final answer is 333.3 grams, or 0.33 kilograms. There's different types of specific latent heat. Specific latent heat of fusion is the latent heat for a change from a solid to a liquid. Specific latent heat of vaporization, that's the specific latent heat for a change from a liquid to vapor. So, we're going to have a little look at this graph. If you have energy on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis, the more energy which you supply to this material or system or whatever, the, um, the you would imagine the temperature would go up. So if you're heating this object up, for example, the temperature begins to rise. So here, as you're heating up this solid, 
the temperature is going up. As the energy increases, the temperature is going up. Then you get to a point where even though you're giving it more energy, the temperature isn't going up. Instead, the temperature is remaining constant. So as the energy is going up, the temperature is remaining constant. And that's because the energy which you're putting into that system through heating it isn't going into the temperature. It's not going into the thermal energy score. It's going into the internal energy. It's breaking those bonds. It's going into the potential store. And what it's doing is it's changing from the solid into a liquid. So as you put more energy in, it's actually going into making that solid into a liquid rather than going into heating the material up. Then it becomes a liquid. And as you heat it up even more, the temperature goes up and continues to do so until you get to a point where it doesn't go up anymore. So even though you're adding energy, even though you're heating the object or system up still, the temperature isn't going up anymore. Instead, it's remaining constant. And that's because, again, you're not providing that energy to make the temperature go up anymore. That energy is going into breaking those bonds in the liquid and it's going into changing the liquid into a gas. And then when it's ready to change into a gas, it becomes a gas. All of the particles are in gas form now. And as you increase the energy that which you give to it, as you heat it up even more, the temperature rises again. If you're following along in your revision workbook, complete task number five and pause the video now. We're going to be looking at particle motion in gases now. The molecules of a gas are in constant random motion. The temperature of the gas is related to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So in a gas, just like a solid and a liquid, the kinetic energy of the particles, how much they're moving and vibrating, that determines the temperature. So if you have a solid and the particles are vibrating like crazy and you touch that surface, um, you'll, you'll, feel, you'll feel that as heat, you'll feel the temperature. If you have a, uh, maybe a system where the particles are in a solid form and they're not moving so much, they have low kinetic energy, well, that's probably cold. So that's a much colder um, temperature if the particles aren't moving as much. So the kinetic energy of the particles, how fast those particles are moving and vibrating, that corresponds to the temperature of those particles. Changing the temperature of a gas held at a constant volume changes the pressure exerted by the gas. So if you have a box and you have gas in that box, if you keep that volume constant so you don't change the shape of the box and you heat that gas up, you will find that the pressure of that gas actually goes up. So if you heat the gas in the uh, this box, the gas will begin to, to vibrate even more and will begin the, the particles will get more kinetic energy. There will be more collisions with the container and that means more pressure. We're going to have a look at this video which will go into that just a little bit more. Hello there. We're looking at the motion of particles in gases. Particles in a gas are far apart. They are spread out and are in random motion. When a particle hits the container, it provides a force. As this force is over a certain area, we get a pressure. So the gas pressure comes from gas particles hitting the side of the container. When you increase the temperature of a gas, the particles get more kinetic energy. They speed up. This means when you heat up the gas, the particles will collide with the container at a greater speed. To increase the pressure of a gas, you need to have more collisions or collisions with more energy. And by heating a gas, you achieve both. This means heating up a gas increases the pressure. So as you increase the temperature of a gas, the particles move quicker. Not only do they move quicker, but they also hit the sides of the container even more. So you are actually achieving both things that you need to increase the pressure. You have more collisions with the container and you have collisions with greater speed. So when you heat that gas up and you keep it in the same volume, you keep the box the same size, the pressure which the gas exerts on the container increases. So let's go through it in the form of a list. Number one, you raise the gas, you raise the temperature of the gas. Number two, the particles get more kinetic energy. 
they move around more. Number three, this makes the gases collide with each other more. So the particle, the gas particles collide with each other more. Number four, this makes the pressure of the gas higher as there are more particle collisions with the container that it's in as well. So they collide with each other more, but more importantly, they collide with the container more. And obviously, because you have all of these gas particles hitting the side of the container, it's providing pressure on that surface. So recap, when the temperature of a gas is increased, the particles get more energy. This makes the particles move around at a faster speed. This increases the pressure exerted on the container as there are more collisions with the side of the gas in the same amount of time. Complete task number six in your Particle Model of Matter workbook if you are following along. Okay, finally, we're going to look at pressure and gases uh, a little bit more, a little bit more in depth. Gases always exert forces at right angles to their container. This is because the particles which are free flowing in gases collide with the walls of the container exerting a force. Pressure changes acted upon the gas cause compression or expansion. Why is it that pressure reduces when the same gas is exposed to a higher volume? It is because when the same gas is in a smaller volume, there are more particles per unit volume. This means there is more collisions per unit area on the container walls. So going back to that picture there, on the left you have a beaker by the looks of it and you have some particles in the beaker. If you put some sort of lid or disc inside that beaker and you press it down just very very slightly, what you'll find is you'll find that those gas particles are moving around in that volume that you've created, in that sort of space. And when those gas particles collide with the sides of the container, what you find is that they provide a force under the container. And because there is an area there, because that um, because that beaker has a, an area around the outside, the force that those particles exert on it creates a pressure. On the right, we've got that same container and we've just pushed that little disc or lid or whatever it is further down, okay? When we've pushed that lid further down, what we're seeing is we're seeing the same amount of gas particles, but in a much smaller volume. Now, that means per unit volume, so in the same amount of space, there is much more gas particles. And if there's more gas particles in the same amount of space, it means they are much more likely to hit the sides of that container. But not only are they more likely to hit the sides of that container, but when you compress the gas particles together, they also collide with each other more. Um, and because they're colliding with each other more, that means they're hitting the sides of the container even more on top of that. So when you compress a gas, uh, like you're doing on the, on the right there, the pressure increases. So this means at a constant temperature, so if we don't change the temperature, the pressure will increase with compression. I mean, that's what you would expect. If you blow up a tire in a bike, on a bike, for example, um, you blow up the tire, you are putting more particles into that tire, into where the tire is. It means the pressure is going to go up because if you touch the surface of your bike tire when there's not very many particles inside, well, the tire is just completely not like hard. You can just press it and it will go in. But if you have the, uh, if you fill that with air, you'll feel that the, the surface of the tire is, is much, much harder to, to compress. It's much more firm, isn't it? So this kind of makes sense. Gases have a pressure constant. So different gases have different constants and this constant allows you to work out volume and pressure exerted by a gas. Next equation, PV equals constant. Pressure times volume is equal to a constant. So every gas will have its own constant, but if you adjust the pressure or the volume, the other one will adjust accordingly to keep this constant the same. And that means you can work out the pressure and the volume after a change. A gas with pressure constant five is subject to 50 pascals of pressure. What is the volume in which it is in? 
Well, the first thing we're going to do is write out our equation PV equals constant. So that means our pressure is 50 pascals, our constant is 5. Um, just you don't. You, well, I'm not sure if you need to know the units. I don't think you need to know the units, but we'll just say 5 for now. So 50, the pressure is 50. The volume, that's our unknown. So we're going to rearrange this formula to get V on its own. V, therefore, is equal to 5 divided by 50. 5 divided by 50, that's 0.1. Because volume is measured in metres cubed, our final answer is 0.1 metres. And cubed. another worked example. A gas with pressure 75,000 pascals and volume 8 metres cubed is in a container. A piston increases the volume of that container to 12 metres cubed. Calculate the new pressure. So, firstly, we're going to write down our equation. PV is equal to a constant. Well, if we ring in those numbers, 75,000 multiplied by 8, well that's equal to 600,000. So our constant is equal to 600,000. Now, as we have previously discussed, that constant for that gas stays the same, providing the temperature stays the same. So this constant is not going to change. Okay, so our new pressure, we don't know. That is what we are asking about in this question. We know that the new volume is equal to 12. So the unknown in our new formula is the pressure. To find out this pressure, we'll divide both sides by 12. 600,000 divided by 12. Evaluating that, we get that our pressure is equal to 50,000. Since pressure is measured in pascals, my final answer is 50,000 pascals. So just to recap, when you have a change in pressure or a change in volume, all you need to do is work out the constant from the initial values. So here, the initial values before the change is 75,000 pascals in 8 metres cubed. Our new value for the volume is 12 metres cubed. So our unknown is the new pressure. Rearranging to find the new pressure is quite easy. You get this new pressure and that's your final answer. This equation is only for constant temperatures. Remember, when the temperature changes, the pressure inside the gas also changes. This means the equation only works when the temperature does not change. Work done is the transfer of energy by a force. Because gas is made up of loose particles, doing work on the gas increases the pressure. As gas is moved, the particles collide with others and push the gas along. This increases the temperature as covered previously. What happens when work is done on a gas? Well, when work is done on a gas, the temperature increases. The internal energy is also increased when work is done moving the gas. So if you move the gas or if you compress a gas, work has to be done. Because you're heating those, when you're heating that gas up, when you're putting that gas into a smaller volume, the gas the temperature goes up. But that energy has to come from somewhere and that goes into work done. When you force those particles into a smaller volume, you've got to do work on whatever surface is moving to force those particles into a smaller volume. Again, back to the pumping up your bike analogy. If you're pumping up a bike, as the pressure increases inside the tyre, so does the temperature. But that temperature has to come from somewhere. And the work done by you pushing the piston up and down on your pump, that work translates into the temperature which is inside the gas. Oh, would you look at that? Here we go. While still in work on the rod of a pump, the gas inside the pump shaft is having to work hard. It's having to work. The gas inside the pump shaft is having work done on it. This moves the gas and increases the temperature of the gas. But this is only for gases which are enclosed. As free gases can move away with very few collisions, as the particles just move into an empty space where particles will not collide with others. So in our bike pump, we have this sort of long tube, if you like. And when you do work in pushing down this piston, what you're doing is you're making those particles collide with each other. When you're doing that, as we've went over, the particles are heating up. So the work done on pushing that bike pump up and down, that translates into the thermal energy inside the gas, inside the pump and then inside the tyre as well. So if you're thinking about a train, um, if the train's moving along the railway, the air in front of that train is getting well moved the train is moving all that air but 
because it's not enclosed, because the gas is just free to move over the train or around the train or even under the train, when the train collides with air in front of it, it just moves to areas where the gas, or oh, the air, is not compressed. If you're following along in your revision workbook, complete task 7 in your workbook. And after that, that's us. We are finished the third topic. We have finished particle model of matter. So congratulations. Um, if I were you, I would now take the test, say how much you've learned, and um, yeah, good luck. Thank you very much for watching. Workbooks and test papers which integrate with these videos and online courses are available at our website, backroadtutoring.com.